So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. It's gonna be getting dark soon, so we're gonna hustle and bustle with this video. So here's the deal right now. I'm going through my garden. We ran out of time today. You know, you make all these lists of things. By the way, welcome back to the channel. Welcome here for, if you're here for the first time. I'm just gonna chit chat about some things that are going on. So here's the deal. So we are almost November 1st. We're pushing into the month of November. The main thing that we have going on here specifically in East Tennessee is today, for example, was beautiful, 80 degrees, warm. I mean, we're, it's beautiful. So everything is continuing to finish off in terms of drying out for seed saving. And I have let these sit right here is my entire zinnia patch in the upper garden. Um, and it's an entire mix of different types of zinnias. It's just a, a total mix. I don't even, I don't even try to separate them anymore. I just seed save and throw them in a big jar and boom, you get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. But we got some beautiful things this year and I want to show this to you. I've got some old videos in the past. Okay, so for example, we're going to be seed saving from this. So this was basically the inner piece of this right here or of one of them. Ginger, are you in here with me? I think Ginger's in here. Um, so I just popped this off because uh, I want you to see your seeds are actually right inside. It's hard. For, they're tiny. And they're actually like in these little envelopes, if you will. I know there's specific names and stuff. but So the main thing that you want to keep for seed saving is all right. Come on, Patera. Use my thumb. Oh, yeah. See all that right in there? All your little seeds are inside all of these little pieces that were part of the flower. So this is what you want to save. I just come through, <laughs> Ginger, I just literally come through and I just start, like this one is obviously still blooming. Isn't that pretty? It's like a lemonade. Um, that's going to sit. But if they're really dry, really crunchy, which the majority of them are, look at all this. You talk about, I mean, we're going to have endless seeds so i'm just going to come through with some uh, like pruners or scissors or whatever you got and just cut these little doodillies off and you can put them in a brown bag that's actually the best thing to put them in just let them do what they're doing and whatnot and next year you're gonna have so many zinnias we're gonna drop the seeds who do i hear meowing at me oh is it sister what is it sister Get them, Ginger. Tell Beta to back off, dude. You better get on up back up to where you need to be, son. Don't be coming down here and messing with us. And look, my girls are going to take care of me. You better watch out. Ginger. Gingy. Hey, guys. Come on. Help me out. So here's the deal. I want to show you this. This was supposed to have been done today, but I'm, I'm going to fall down. You can laugh with me when I fall down. So here's some good news. It's super beautiful, super dry, and it's time to bring in my corn. I have waited as long as I possibly could in order to do so because I wanted it as dry as possible. Well, today and tomorrow, like I said, we're in the 80s, uh, low, low, high 70s, low 80s, beautiful full sun. By the time you get outside, if you get out in the late afternoon, um, everything is pretty dry. It's not still real mildewy. So tomorrow is going to be corn, corn collecting day because rain is moving in and then we're going to be 27. James says we're going to be 27 Wednesday morning. My phone says 31. His phone says 27. All I know is we are below freezing <sighs> and we ain't had a goat baby yet. Oh, Gingy. Gingy, let's check the corn. I've already checked some already. Look at all this. Rocky top, you will always be. <laughs> Ooh, it looks like there was a worm in that at one time. Look. All right, but this is what we're going to do. James and I were talking about this. So we're bringing the large wagon up tomorrow, probably around lunchtime. And we're going to be taking all of the corn, that all of my corn down. Um, and there's a lot, okay? The reason I grew this corn, if you've been watching my videos over the last year, this is your Hickory King, not the Hickory Cane. That's supposed to be really wonderful too, but I grow Hickory King, K-I-N-G. Like, you know, the King of England, whatever. We broke away from you people a long time ago. <laughs> we don't want no king. Anyway, haha. -ha. 
Um, so what I'll do is I'm just going to take all of these. They are dry. I mean, folks, if somebody slap you upside the head, it's like hitting you with a baseball bat. There's an automatic weapon right there. Um, long story short, so I'm going to be taking them in for now. And then over the winter, I will literally take the uh, husk off and then I will be shelling them. We've, I've shown you how to shell those real easy. You may have a whole setup for that. I just do it by hand with a little sheller and it's great to do in the winter. This corn is excellent. I mean, most excellent uh, to grind for cornbread. You cannot beat it. I mean, there's probably other very varieties that are just as good, but I'm just saying Hickory King is pretty doggone awesome. So it just takes a couple of these to get some for really good seed saving to do a pretty decent plot. I mean, you're not gonna have a huge plot, but <laughs> enough for your kitty cats to hide that in, that's for sure. But the rest of it, of course, is going to be for cornmeal that I can use for cornbread and things of the like. And you know what? If push comes to shove, I do but I do declare that that's some good vittles for your chickens and whatnots. Now, the other good news, which you're, you're not going to care about. I know, but I'm just going to tell you anyway. So we have gotten, um, oh, sister, we have gotten um, a lot of things done today, which is why we didn't get to the corn. We had to go get a bunch of different things that we need for all of the goat babies that are coming. I wanted to make sure that I was topping off all of the items that I know that I will most likely possibly need uh, when we start having all of these babies. And you can see it's not happening yet. That's okay. Hey, 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 that's okay. That gives me more time to continue to prep and plan, right? So um, you can see up here they're hanging out. But um, here's the deal. I know you see my rickety, my rickety barn. It's just the siding is, the barn is in great shape. It's just the siding is old uh, and needs to be replaced. So we're gonna start replacing hopefully soon one side at a time. We only have to do technically three. The front of the barn, which is this side over here, it never looks rickety and old and mildewy and yucky because the sun hits it and it keeps it really warm, so that's great. So it looks like butter. It looks like butter, baby. But this side and the other side that the bull tore up, um, you know, it needs to be replaced at some point. And then of course, we'll work our way up to doing the actual top of the barn, but we're probably gonna have to take it in sections due to cost. So I've looked at some metal and we, I've, I've got it down to two choices and I've decided to go with a dark color. Hopefully the, the price won't choke me out. I need a price quote on the different, because the last time I messed with metal, the, the colors were different, you know, they're different, they're different prices per linear square foot. So I'm looking at a dark, dark charcoal brown or a dark chocolate brown. They're just like one shade different, but I think that would be best. Uh, number one, my house is dark brown. And number two, it's going to show less of that yucky yuck. So pray for us. You know, I know that's something silly, but it's nice to have new coverage of your critters. Uh, and like I said, uh, we're getting some price quotes right now. And we're going to start with the worst side first. <laughs> and we'll, we'll just work our way through. This may be a project that takes us two years to complete. Um, it just depends on the money and everything else, but that's what we're working on. So that's a positive. I know in today's world, I know every, everything going on, you're like, who cares? I'm like, okay, I get it, but I care, and it's something positive. I mean, what, who do you want to talk about? The president? Okay, Fritz. Okay, I see you, Fritz. Let's back it on up. Back it on up. Back it up. Let's turn around. There is Ginger. Oh, look, y'all. Look, 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 look. Right over here. Sister, honey. Where are you, girlfriend? I see you. Is the camera picking you up? Are you bathing? There she is right there. <laughs> there we go. Sister. What you doing, girlfriend? Everybody sees you. Sister wants to be a part of the party. But it has to be on her own terms. Oh, I hope you get that. All right, I think this one is, sounds like it's going to look good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing good. All right, guys. Didn't happen today, but it must tomorrow. Okay, so at this point, the only thing that I'm seeing remaining that I can seed say from in this area is definitely the corn. Um, might be a little bit of cosmos left. I've let it go to seed in this area because I want it to rejuvenate, rejuvenate itself. Come on, Ginger. Oh, you can hear her running through the corn. 
<laughs> her her big old poofy booty. Come on, girlfriend. <laughs> Um, but the zinnias and the corn, that's pretty much, maybe a few cosmos, but that's, we're pretty much at the end of it. I've got some, um, my corn beads down there. I might have a few more of that, but we're basically just pushing to end everything pretty much by Monday because of the weather coming in and because we're going to be so distracted with all the goat babies anyway. And with winter coming in, we're moving some uh, wood uh, tomorrow as well to make sure that we have it, it you know, easy access. You have your main, your main plots, your main areas that you pretty much just leave alone and let them, you know, let it all uh, cure and whatever, but we already have some ready to go. So we're gonna bring it closer. You're just getting, <laughs> just getting everything ready. <laughs> now that doesn't feel great, Fritz. <laughs> but this is what we're also debating. If you can see it, I don't know if you can see it. So I've actually, when we, we, when we did the fencing, and this is what I talk about to people, um, you're going to have to invest in fencing, do what works best for you, but you're, you're not going to have large critters if you don't have good fencing, because believe me, they can find their way to get out of anything, especially a buck. Another story, uh, you know, my stories, <laughs> that's how I ended up having all these goat babies. But what we did is we actually, we took the fence all the way down and then we put an actual gate there. And so we figure when we were ready we will cut the fence right there so that way we can just swing open the gate and then the cows can come in here and then the goats can come in here and they can graze the main thing that i want to make sure that i don't have anything going on in here uh, is remnants of any potato plants or nightshade i don't believe i do um i believe they're it's all gone but i'm gonna have to look that over so that's what we were talking about today. So will we cut this this year and let everybody come over and graze? That would be wonderful, but I'm definitely going to have to wait. I want to wait until at least um, all the goat babies are here and safe and we've got that all done uh, and uh, that's squared away and then we'll make that move. So this right here pretty much seems to be the last of my Cosmos, the Bright, light, bright Lights Cosmos, my favorites. So this is the last little bit over here on the end and they are volunteers that all down through there. Well, okay. Fritz, Fritz, what are you doing? Hey. Are you the man? Of the, are you the man with the plan, honey? Oh, where's Ginger? Is she gonna run and jump too? Ginger, can you make it? Okay, Ginger, all bets are on you right now. Can she do it, Fritz? Can she do it? Come on, girlfriend. Eye of the tiger, girl. Eye of the tiger. Come on, girlfriend. Girlfriend, I believe in you, girlfriend. Listen, if this old woman can run 5Ks, you can jump the fence. Come on, girl. Whoop. Woo! Honey, you've been drinking protein shakes. Can you I can barely see her. There she is right there. Stinkers. Such stinkers. So, where we, what we did today, we had to. I just got to where I just hate to go out and shop. I really do. I do. We got another large tub because in case you need to bring in some goat babies, you've seen from past videos, I'll just kind of put them in a large tub. Puppy pads. Rural King was completely sold out. They had the best ones for the price and they were completely sold out. So I was like, well, okay. Um, but they weren't sold out of Freedom Seeds. Pew, pew. And by the way, I want to let you know, I don't know how long the sale is going to go. So you need to check in your area but they had several um, types of freedom seeds uh, on sale today. So for, uh, really good brands. And uh, so you might wanna check that out in your area if you have a Rural King, so just a heads up on that. Um, I did buy two heat lamps. I'm not a big fan of heat lamps, you know that. I only turn them on if I am present with the actual animal itself. Um, but I chose to go ahead and just have two with two bulbs just in case. I hope not to use them. I don't like them. 
but if I choose to use them, then I know that I have to be present. So, but I just want, I didn't want to have to, what I don't want is for us to start having 30,000 goat babies and I go, okay, I need this. And then somebody has got to be sent out to hopefully find something, which is hit or miss half the time. And then, you know, it's just like, it's like a 45 minute drive to get anywhere. So we have to really be particular. So I got the tub, I got the puppy pads. I did buy baby diapers. Uh, I did buy some um, newborn Watch these goats run. I got newborn uh, size because they're so small uh, when they're first born. Um, we've got all our bottles lined up. I've got all my meds lined up. Um, we've got all the minerals taken care of with the mamas. Um, blankets, we're gonna get out all of our old towels tonight. We decided to go through our towels. So what I'm gonna do is you know, have four or five older towels ready to go. You will need them possibly, most likely. Uh, and then I'll open up a new pack of towels to replace for us um, because I've got some. What else? What else? What else? What else? We got Veteracin spray, or you may call it, call it Veteracin or whatever. That's really for all we just need in general for um, barn needs. What all do we get, babe? We got lamps, towels, blankets, puppy pads. Got all the medications. Bottles are ready to go. I got my blow dryer. Am I forgetting something? Ginger, I want you to know, girlfriend, you mastered that jump. I mean, you're just like a pro. I mean, you are a pro, sister, huh? Okay, I'm gonna leave my corn with you, okay? I'm gonna go check the barn with James, okay? Can you handle it? Okay. Hi, sister. How's it going in here, honey? How you doing, Bugsy? You doing good, Mama? You need to hurry and hatch these babies soon because I need my doghouse back. <laughs> okay, do you see this? You need to have it on your shelf. Very, very important. Now, you I call it Vetericin. I think I'm saying it wrong. I've been saying it wrong for years, but uh, I'm from East Tennessee, so I get away with that. <laughs> But this right here is the bee's knees, and let me tell you why. I have, I've been, we've used this for years. So you have normal Vetericin wound spray. Excellent to have on the farm, whether, it, on, even if you just have dogs and chickens, okay? Wound spray, right? Then they also make a, a, a similar one that's for humans. It's called Puricin. We keep it at the house for ourselves in case we have a scrape or an abrasion or like, for example, when I got punctured, it stabbed in the leg with the fencing a couple years ago, and I had to go, the, they had to scrape it out and cut all this stuff out. Uh, I used this as my wound spray. Worked great. I'm scarred, but <laughs> look here. Uh, sister scars, no matter what, okay? But this right here is for like pink eye, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I have used this on a few critters, but not too many, but let me tell you what I did. So last week, I noticed I had two toms that had gotten into a scuffle with some of the others and they kind of beat them up. They did, they do that. It's, it's unfortunate, but that they're, they're competing. So a couple of them had some rough spots on the face and got poked in the eye. So what I've been doing every day, twice a day, that's why this is out. In fact, I'm, I'm running out. Um, I've been spraying the turkeys right on the edges of their face, right near the eyes and every, the swelling is gone. Uh, the wounds are really healing and they can, they've kept all of their eyeballs. I know you're like, well, believe me, ch birds get mean, man. They'll, they'll poke the quail in particularly. If they get into a scuffle because they're competing for whatever, they will take, eat, they will take the eyeballs straight out. So here's what I'm saying. This is something that you might want to grab. If it's a medication that you don't have, you can put it on the shelf. You're going to tell everybody good night, sister. Sister, I'm hitting the driveway. I'm gonna watch everybody in the field. You wanna participate? Looks like you got a snack, girlfriend. Now, let me show you this. I've talked about these before. You may wanna grab a couple of them to put away. This is great to put feed in. This is what we've been using, these large pickle barrels like I told you a couple weeks ago. We've been using them for all of our feeds. So we've been getting them. We had several and we just keep adding them. 
and we line them up and then we put it after we've cleaned them out some of them might need to be sprayed some dawn dish soap maybe a little bleach take a couple of days and you know whatever but once they're cleaned out and ready to go we put our feed bags in them this these are holding about six bags about around six 50 pound bags of feed we've got the goat we've got the cow some people have large feeders if you've got that god love you god bless you that's great I, i'm not there yet they're very expensive and i really don't have a spot at this time for it so we have opted for this and they work great okie dokie cows are eating hi daffodil cows are doing good no problems with the cows we got to finish putting that metal on over here but i like to kind of walk up here because it kind of helps me to see which goats are moving faster than others uh, there goes sister you gonna walk with me sister i knew you would uh we gotta hurry because it's getting dark um I like to see which goats are hanging out with who. I like to see how fast or slow they're moving. I'm really watching Scout. We're just gonna ignore her, y'all. Let's see what she does. We're just gonna, remember, we're just gonna kind of ignore her and we'll just keep walking. Let's see if she runs with us. I know she will. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of just keeping an eye on the, on movement general activity um who is nibbling still um doesn't necessarily mean anything like i said i could wake up come out tomorrow morning and there's a bunch of goat kids bouncing around but you do want to monitor how slow some of them are you might be able to see when they're walking how much swelling there is or how much uh you want to feel for the ligaments in terms of how loose they are but basically we're watching and uh Got our fingers crossed. The main thing today was very stressful because we literally had to go to like six different places to get all the things that we needed. And that kind of ate into the time in which we wanted to be here doing more things here, but we'll just have to make it count tomorrow and Monday. Right? So that's what we're doing. And I want to keep you posted because I know every, even on Facebook and Instagram, you're like, do you have any goat kids yet? And I'm like, no, not yet. But like I said, when we did this, we put the buck out with the girls and we just said, okay, we're gonna go with this. So like I said, we could have some, Ginger, don't get walked on by the by the cow. Come on, Ginger, come on, girlfriend. Oh my gosh, hang on. Sweetheart, you, okay, and there's another one running there. D hey, girlfriend, hey, girlfriend, how you doing, honey? Let me come down here, are you trying to be on film? Are you trying to be a movie, you are a movie star girl. Now, while we have her, I want you to look and see how well and how beautiful uh, she is doing. I uh, really was pleased with taking this girl back in June. Uh, we didn't want to breed her till we had her here for a bit. Um, she's been a mama several, several times, a good mama, a good milker. But, you know, you can still see, you're, you're going to see some of the bones, okay, and the pinning and different things like that. She's a milk cow, y'all. She's a Guernsey. You're supposed to see that. But she has put on weight. Her coat is coming on really strong. That's what we want. Hi, baby. Now, this is my shy girl, y'all. This is kind of big. I want you to see this. So, this is cookie butter, and she's kind of an oddball around here. But we love oddballs. How you doing, girl? Are you going to let... Let's see what she does, y'all. Oh. Thank you, honey. She's very skittish. And uh, I have kind of pretty much accepted the fact that I may never milk her. But I am pretty much under the opinion that she would be a good breeder. And um, she's definitely got some decent, well, you can't really see right now because it's dark. She's got some decent teats back there. But again, we won't know until we actually breed her. But I think we should have uh, some good calves from her when we do breed her. If that happens, right? Okay, is this Fritz or sister? What are y'all doing up here? You better get moving. Here comes Big Mama. <laughs> I don't have any bread, sister. You want a snack? All right. Everybody's good. Everybody's safe. So like I said, we're still watching. Uh, we're still waiting. I've got to finish up my seed saving. It's the final bit of the seed saving. <laughs> yeah, Fritz. Fritz is like, where, I got to find a pole to jump. Come on. You better keep going. <laughs> the cows are coming. Um, we got to finish the seed saving, move a little bit more wood around. Um, we've pretty much gotten all of our major things done. We've got to do a few more touches for the greenhouse that you're asking about. 
um, and different things like that. So everything's working out pretty doggone good and we're pretty pleased. You just gotta stay at it, guys. I had to forego running my 5K this morning. Had a 5K lined up to go to over in Teleco Plains. That's my, that's my home stomping grounds. And uh, I, I got up this morning and we had so much to do on our list that I said, I'll do it next time. There's too many things to do. All right, guys, it's getting dark. I'm gonna walk back to the house. Everybody looks okay. We're on baby watch. And we're gonna make the rest of the season, which is about two more days, count as much as possible. Y'all be safe, good. You're always good, right? I know, you're always good. Be safe and keep, keep prepping. Just keep preparing, guys. Okay, I know it's rough and tough out there and uh, it's hard to sometimes focus. That's why I'm saying you have to pick and choose and go, no, I'm doing all these things today. I've got this going on. I'm not gonna get bogged down with social media. I'm not gonna get bogged down with the crazy news. Yes, yes, yes. And then you have to just say, let's go, let's go. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow. Like, subscribe, and share. I'm gonna go make James some chocolate chip cookies. I promised him chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> Godspeed and we'll see you on the next video. Let's go. Are you ready to go back to the house? Did you make it out?